Okay, so today's lesson we're going to talk about the mole. Uh, notice uh, on the uh, uh, graphic I have up here, this is a little mole there. It's uh, writing a very special number on the board. Uh, the mole that we're talking about is not a little burrowing animal. Uh, instead, it's a unit in science. And how many of you remember when you studied the SI base unit? Remember when we did that before? And one of the units was the mole. Remember that? Okay. And what quantity did that measure? It was the mole was the unit. It was no, not mass. No, there was something else for mass. It was kilograms for mass? Uh, substance. A little bit more. Yeah, you're close. <coughs> oh, you said amount. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I just heard substance. Amount of substance. Yes. And so that's what we're talking about. A mole. It's a special unit that's really used primarily in science, and I'll explain why in a in a bit. But. Just so you don't think it, we're totally nutso to have this strange you know, unit name, think about this, okay? There are many examples uh, in our world today where we use a, a, a word, okay, to represent an amount of something. Think about dozen, all right? Think about pair, okay? Think about other words like a few or several, right? Um, they usually uh, mean a specific number of things, right? If you have a dozen eggs, how many eggs do you have? You have 12, right? 12 eggs. A baker's dozen. What's a baker's dozen? Anyone know? That's, yeah, it's 13, right? It's just kind of one extra in there. But a dozen is 12, and we all understand that to be 12 things. Now, we can have a dozen eggs. We can have a dozen people. We can have a dozen cars. We can have a, a dozen tests in a semester. Wouldn't that be great? We're going to do an activity here to help you understand this unit called a mole. Okay. Now, look at this picture over here. This number that this little um, uh, lab-coded scientist mole here is writing on the board is a very, very large number. It says 6.02 times 10 to the power of 23. Now, with that power there on the 10, that is a huge number. Okay. That's 6. 0, 2, followed by 21 zeros. So you move 23 decimal places from right there. And here's the number if it was written out in non-scientific notation. Look at all those zeros. Okay? Now, why on earth would we need to introduce a new unit of measurement like this? Well, in, in chemistry, does anyone want to make a guess about what it is about chemistry that would, we would need a really large number for things? Want to make a guess? If you're transferring one unit to another unit, okay. If we're, okay, you said atoms, okay. What, what would atoms have to do with this really large number, do you think? Okay, a, a number of atoms. Okay, listen, you're on the right track there. If, I, if I'm talking about a group of people, okay, I don't normally need to talk about this many people, right? Or if I'm talking about cars, I don't normally need to talk about this vast number of cars planets or, you know, even, um, I mean, atoms in the universe, we're talking about numbers this large, we can talk about groups of numbers that large, but normal things, we don't need this, like, dozen, a pair, right? Those are okay, but when we're talking about atoms, atoms and molecules and ions in chemistry are so small that in order to talk about a reasonable amount of those things, we need to consider a very large number of them. So, for example, in the palm of your hand right now, if you were to cup your hand, you would have a tiny little pile um, even the, with the size of this eraser, okay? This right here would be pretty close to a mole of, um, let's say, carbon atoms right here. That's a mole. That's 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, roughly, this much. So, this is not a lot, is it? Like this little eraser that I have in my hand, okay? This is not a lot of atoms. I mean, it's not a lot of substance when we talk about grams or anything like that, but it's a lot of atoms. You see that? Okay, so that's my little spiel on that. Now, let's just say, and again, this is just a little activity. You may like it, you may not. Let's just say that we are going to introduce a brand new unit of measurement. Okay? Now, this was part of an activity that we're not going to do uh, for sake of time, and I know it has to do with jelly beans. Some of you are 
do this because I'm really sorry. But let's say we have four of something, and I've got four pens up here. All right, four pens. And if I have four of something, I am now going to call this a hamster of pens or a hamster of things. Okay? I don't know, mole, hamster, I think, you know, see the connection there. So this is a hamster, four. Okay? A hamster. If I have a hamster of oranges, how many oranges do I have? I have four. So you can fill that in your page, four. Why? Because one hamster includes four items. What about a hamster of grapes? How many grapes do I have? Uh, yeah, four. If I have a hamster of Skittles, you guys getting a hankering for something sweet here or yet? Or a hamster of molecules. Okay, now we're talking about something very different, very small. But a hamster of molecules would have how many molecules of water? Yeah, four. It's a pretty tough activity so far, hey? A hamster of atoms of oxygen, four atoms of oxygen. All right. So now that we have an understanding of what a hamster of items is, let's answer the following questions. How many jelly beans would there be found in two hamsters of jelly beans? Oh, four times two or eight. Yes, we just, the number in one times two. What about the number of Skittles in ten hamsters? Yeah, let's do four times ten to be, to make forty. How many chocolate bars are there in 200 hamsters? 800, yeah. 800. You see that? Because we're doing 200 groups of four. That's all it is. How many candies are there in 0.5 hamsters? Very good. And this is a tough one. What about 3.5 hamsters? That's 3.5 times four is 14. Very good. Okay, so, so right now you guys are pretty quick and pretty good at dealing with hamsters, okay? So a hamster in this little make-believe world here is anything that contains four items. Just like a pair contains two items, a dozen contains 12. All right, so in chemistry, this is on the second uh, page of your handout there now. In chemistry, there's a unit of measurement called the mole. This uh, is a unit of measurement of anything that contains, and now we're not talking about four items, we're talking about 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd items, okay? That's what a mole of items is, a mole of jelly beans, a mole of cars, a mole of calculators, right? A mole of atoms. So it's a very large number. Obviously, we write this in scientific notation, so it's a little easier to write. But this number is very important for you guys to memorize, okay? You're going to be using it a lot. But this is known as Avogadro's number. Uh, now, Avogadro was long past and, um, when this was named after him, but he did a lot of work to come around to this number, okay? So his work laid the foundation for us to understand this number, and I'm, I'm not going to go into detail right now why this number is the one that it is. I mean, it's, it seems like a pretty random number, right? There is a reason, okay? And... Uh, I think that, um, well, I don't know. I, I think I might just expand more on it uh, another day. I don't want to give you too much to handle today. But it's called Avogadro's number, and I will explain why uh, in another lesson. So um, let's do some calculations, some questions involving a mole instead of a hamster. Okay? So a mole of oranges is going to have how many oranges in it? Yes, one mole is 6.02 times 10 to the 23 oranges. Okay. A mole of grapes, 6.02 times 10 to the 23. A little bit of repetition is good for us, isn't it? A mole of Skittles, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. A mole of molecules of water, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. A mole of atoms of oxygen, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. So let's continue on using this new number now. And let's finish these questions. How many jelly beans are found in two moles? Okay, I heard 6.04 times 10 to the 23rd. Mm, no, what you have to do is you actually have to multiply this number by 2. Now, it may not be um, obvious what this, what this is, but watch this. 
you can do this on your calculator, 6.02, and then you use your scientific notation button, that's the EE on this calculator, and then 23, and then do that times 2, and you get this number, 1.204 times 10 to the 24. Uh, is it okay? The question was: Is it the same as 12.04 times 10 to the 23? Yes and no. It's the same number of items, although you wouldn't write it like that because that's not proper scientific notation. Yes, because that would be two digits before the decimal. So I'll get you to write in proper scientific notation form, which means, and this was this was the question, okay? So 12.04 times 10 to the 20. Now that makes sense because 6.02 times 2 is 12.04. But this is not in proper scientific notation, so we, I will ask you to write 1.204 and then times 10 to the 24 instead. Okay? Very good. Okay, 10 moles. 10 moles has how many Skittles in it? Well, yeah, if we're going to multiply this by 10, remember that the neat part about this is that this is powers of 10. So if we have one more power of 10, we actually have the same number, and we just change this one right here to 20. Of course, you could do that on your calculator as well. I'm going to do the next one on the calculator. All right, so 200 moles, well, 6.02, and 10 to the power of 23 times 200. Your calculator should give you um, uh, the answer in scientific notation. So 1.204 times 10 to the 26. Okay. Letter I, when we talk about 0.5 moles, well, you multiply this number by 0.5, and that one's pretty easy to do in your head. It's just half of 6.02 is 3.01 times 10, and that's still the 23. And then 3.5 moles do that on your calculator. 3.5 is 2.107 times 10 to the 24. Okay? So don't be afraid of these really large numbers. Right? It doesn't, doesn't mean a whole lot. Yes, that's a lot of atoms, and we're going to give or take a few million atoms here, right, when we, when we do our measurements and stuff like that. Like, yes, there's a large amount of error that could happen here, but Really, the atoms are so small that we need to have a very large number in order to handle them correctly. Okay, so uh, the last part of your page here, we're going to, uh, okay, I don't know what you guys have in your page. You guys just have one and two on your handout, correct? Okay, so let's deal with, with um, uh, this last part here, number one. Now, there's, uh, there's different ways, and I'm going to show you a different way uh, tomorrow. Not a different way, but just another way to look at these calculations. I'll do that tomorrow when I explain Avogadro's number a bit. But... Um, I guess at this point, there's some conversion factors that you're going to want to keep in mind. When we're converting from moles to atoms uh, or, you know, such, uh, such like that, there's some conversion factors you want to remember. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, and you'll see this particles, okay, because when we're talking about a mole of things, it could be anything, right? And in chemistry, often we talk about atoms, but sometimes we talk about molecules, formula units for ionic compounds, uh, or ions, okay? So, uh, they use the word particles. For, okay, so there's this many particles in one mole. Also, um, one mole is to this many particles. Now, why do you want to keep this in mind? Because when we're converting, you often, I mean, one of the ways you can do this is you multiply, always multiply by some conversion factor. And... Uh, one of these conversion factors is always going to help you convert between uh, particles and moles. Okay? So this is one way of looking at it. Now, for example, number one, the number of atoms in 0.5 moles of aluminum. Okay? So 0.5 moles. Well, we know that 0.5 moles, we know what that number is already, but how could we use this conversion factor? You know, as I said before, we're multiplying, going to multiply by something. Which one of these conversion factors would work to get me... 0.5 moles, and you should see already that C, right, because we just did a question up here, right here, 0.5 moles, see, 3.01 to 10 to 23, but what would I multiply by to get that number? Which conversion factor? 
Okay, so would it be this one? 6.02 times 10 to the 23 um, molecule, or sorry, atoms. Let's write atoms instead of particles. Atoms over one mole. Yeah, that's the one we would use. Exactly. We do 0.5 times this divided by 1. Now, another way to, to reason why we would use this one is, do you remember our unit analysis? Remember when we did unit analysis before? We did unit analysis before, correct? Remember that? Moles on top, moles on the bottom, they cancel each other out. And we're trying to find the number of atoms, right? That's what the question is saying. So that's how you know to use that one. So the units cancel out. So it's 0.5 times this gives you C. Questions? All right, let's take a look at number two then. What is the number of moles of sulfur in this many atoms? Okay, well, you're given 1.8 times 10 to the 24 atoms. <coughs> Which conversion factor might I use? Well, I want to get rid of the atoms unit, and I want moles. Right? So what's this conversion factor? It's 1 mole is to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd, which when you multiply this, this times 1 divided by this, you're dividing here. Okay, so just to finish that off then, 1.8 times 10 to the power of 24 divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23 is 2.9900332. Okay, so what would we round that to? Right here. Yeah, three moles. Okay. Any questions? All right. Um, just in, uh, with a partner right now, I want you to just talk about this question and this answer with someone nearby you. Why do you think it's important that chemists use this universal language for communicating quantities in chemical reactions? So why do we need um, why do we need this unit, and why is this good to be used universally in the, in, the, in the field? Okay, so why would we have this unit at all, and what good would, this, would it do? Okay, take a few minutes to think about that, and that's your lesson for today on the introduction to the mobile.